Hey guys, so today we are going to answer a subscriber question and the question in question was Frederick, what is your secret to writing beautiful code? So let's get into it. First disclaimer, I do not write beautiful code. I don't think that there are very, very few people who are in the industry who would claim that they write beautiful code because hey, from your own perspective, everything you make is crap. Well, unless you're a pompous type of person or like very full of yourself because then you might actually it's actually kind of funny because there is this claim that every programmer goes through these different stages where you will arrive at some point at that magical moment when you feel like everything you do is amazing and everything you produce is like everything everybody else is doing is kind of like so so but what you do is pretty well uh, pretty good i haven't arrived there yet so maybe i uh, maybe that's coming up for me Maybe I will sit here one day and say that, hey, guys, you should write things in this way instead of that way because it's much better and it's perfect and so forth. I actually know a few people like that. But if I am to actually give you something concrete on this, uh, this question, I feel like I, I, should, I should try to just go through the things that I personally think uh, I, that I consider when I look at something that is beautiful. Regardless of if it's, if it's me or if it's somebody else who writes it. All right, first and foremost, let's get the obvious stuff out of the way. Practice. I, I know, right? It's a shocker. Practice. That's the thing. Like, even if you write shitty code, if you write shitty code for long enough and you actually continuously try to iterate over the... Like, I mean, if you're still learning things and if you're still iterating, you will refine your method. Even the shittiest code in the world can be written in a good way. Remember that. That's probably go. Uh, my hope is that that statement will sink in at some point in your career, and you will realize what I actually mean by that. So, just iterating and practicing. That's number one, first and foremost. The second thing that I try to focus on when I write software is to first and foremost. I can. It's a two-part thing, this. So we'll just stick with the first thing that might be tricky, and that is to un truly understand the problem that you are solving. Understand the... Don't focus so much on... How do I put this? Don't, don't focus too much on the task at hand. Try to fo just think, think of how would you write this in order to account for possible problems. Now, this is a dangerous one, because what I don't mean pre-optimize. I'm not saying that you should generalize all the things. That's the thing that might be, be miscommunicated here. I'm not stating that, oh, I'm go you're going to sit down and write something. Your first thought should not be, how do I write this as perfectly as humanly possible? Your first thought should be, how do I write this with the exact amount of effort that is required in order for this to be a good solution? That's a big difference because there are, especially juniors, they will over-optimize their solution ahead of time. I mean, I did that as well guys i remember back in the day when i decided uh, my my teacher he asked me to write a basic crud application create read update and delete application the simplest damn thing it's basically a to-do app and i built it took almost no effort and then i thought to myself but what happens if the database goes missing and so i added in support so that if the connection to the database actually goes down it the application will start storing and like, i created a hash map basically just stored things in memory instead and then i thought but what happens if i'm going low on memory then the next thing was to check whether or not there's enough memory to actually continue doing this and then it will try to write to the file system but what if there's no file system you see like i, I mean my teacher get, kind of slapped me on the fingers immediately and said frederick this is bad code and i went well, how can this be bad code? It's much better than just storing things to the database. And he goes, no, you just overcomplicated the problem. It's, it's, your, your requirements aren't to create a solution that will never fail. Your requirements are to create something that seems reasonable. And that's the thing you're going for. And it requires experience, I'm sorry to say. You have to, after, and you learn that after a while. You will fuck up enough times that you will finally realize that Certain things are good, certain things are bad to do when you write software. And you, unfortunately, the best way to learn that is to fuck up. That's what you're going to have to do. Or ideally, you should learn from coworkers or people around you. But that's basically what it comes down to. So number two is to really have that, uh, have a good understanding, like learn how to write code that 
perfectly solves the problem. I'm not saying perfect code. I'm saying that for that given problem that you are, you can you kind of get a fingertip feeling for it. It's almost like a sixth sense. You kind of get this unspoken sense that, all right, I can do all of these things and I need to think about all these things. But given this specific scenario, and this is experience, guys, this is what experience is. You go, I know I should probably be doing all of these things but it's not really all that important given my current situation so I will write this in this manner because this is probably the most sustainable and most reasonable thing to do at this time in other words you're not trying to fill it's like a cup you're trying to fill the cup just to the to the edge you don't want to do too much you don't want to overfill it or underfill it you want to get that perfect amount of investment into the software that you are writing so that's number two number three and this is something that I think is by far and wide one of the most important things and that is that you optimize your code for readability always you always always should think from the perspective all right if i'm somebody else reading this because your code trust me guys the code that you write will be read more than it's going to be updated i can promise you that it there people will sp honestly this is a kind of an, an industry secret i would almost say more people spend time reading code and trying to solve it then they are trying to well, update it basically it, you spend a lot more time just trying to under, understand other people's code so trying your best to write code that is easy to read and comprehend to other people is one of the most important things that you can do in order to write good like clean good software there's actually a very good book on this which is called clean code you should have a look at it it will give you a great deal of a great a good foundation for understanding what i'm talking about here so what i want you to take away from this is that number one in order to write you know the way that i think about writing good and pretty software First and foremost, practice. You have to practice. The hands-on experience, just write shitty code over and over and over until it actually starts to turn into something good, number one. Number two is never ever try to overcomplicate the problem. Always try to figure out the perfect amount of work effort that you need to put into something so that you don't write too much and you don't try to like make things a much, much more complicated than they have to be, right? Thirdly, Optimize your code for readability at all times because trust me the computer will understand what you're saying if the syntax is correct But the problem isn't the computer the problem is the human that needs to maintain that code. Have a great day